Many is Tatiana Wotrobekova, and I'm a PhD candidate at the Institute of Classical Archaeology in, uh, at Charles University in Prague, in Czech Republic. And uh, I would like to present my paper about application of the technique of multi-image photogrammetry for documenting the facades of Etruscan rock cut tombs and what are the possibilities of uh, the further use of data from 3D documentation in archaeological analysis and other actions which allows a virtual, virtual environment. Uh, I will demonstrate it on several case studies and try to make an evaluation of the method. And I would like to say this study arises from experimental part of my master thesis and now I'm continuing and working in makes part of my doctoral thesis. So Etruscan rock cut tombs with decorated facades are specific for area of inland southern Etruria, that now are regions of Tuscany and Lazio in Italy. Uh, this zone is characterized by volcanic tombstone, by waste flat plateau, deep canyon-like valleys created by rivers and crater lakes. Uh, these tombs were constructed from the 2nd quarter of the 6th century BC to the beginning of the 2nd century BC. They were excavated in a natural vertical cliff of volcanic, volcanic tombstone. The tomb, tombs consist of the burial chamber that is excavated inside the rock and the facade on the surface. In the Hellenistic period, facade and burial chamber were separated but the burial chamber is not behind the facade of the tomb, it is much more simple and the emphasis is on the decoration of the facade. Uh, facades, the decoration of the facade is carved into the rock and reproduces architectural elements and in the Hellenistic period also floral and figural motifs and some of the facades bears also inscriptions. Due to the character of the tombstone, which is very soft, uh, facades suffer from very heavy erosion caused mainly by water and vegetation. Um, carved decoration as well as inscriptions are slowly vanishing. So I would like to show you some fo photos of the tombs to have an idea how they look. This is uh, one of my case studies. It's Tomba de la Sirena from the Necropolis of Sotaripa in Savannah. It's from Hellenistic period. This is another shot from Savannah that shows the on the upper part are the facades. The that holes in facades are from Roman period, they're not Etruscan, and the uh, down part is uh, where are actual the burial tombs excavated. So you can see that the facade is not part of uh, the actual burial chamber, it's up and the, the rest, the down part was, in the, in the past it was covered, now, covered, and now it's uh, by erosion, it's open. This is another example of uh, facades, that uh, actually the burial chambers are down in the rock. This is from the Acropolis of Nonchia, also from Hellenistic period. And some of them are also archaic. And another Hellenistic uh, example, is uh, the, the so-called Doric tombs from Norkia. So you can also see the facade is on the top of the volcanic uh, cliff and the actual burial chambers are in the down part that you cannot see. So in my work I, I focused on the facades and not on the burial chambers. So why I choose to use the multi-image photogrammetry for this uh, type of monuments. Uh, in the beginning I, I chose it because I thought that it's the most suitable for documenting the rock surface, as also the other uh, presenters say, and uh, we um, has already saw a lot of examples. And uh, it is uh, uh, very good to document the carved decoration or very uh, small elaborated surface in the rock, also in relief or also incised, cutted. 
and uh, another um, uh, advantage is that you don't need to have direct contact because these uh, tombs, the, the surface of the tombs is very fragile, so if uh, you would like to do walk on it or um, a lot or to put some instruments or something, you, you can you can destroy some some um, elements or so to to destroy surface. And uh, also these uh, tombs, the sur these facades are uh, like in very big dimensions and on very hardly accessible um, places. So from from standing uh, in front of them, you can uh, access by scanning also the places that in in, in physically you could not uh, you could not get in there. So in a short, uh, how what, what equipment I used? Uh, very basic uh, hardware. In in my first uh, uh, tests, I used a very uh, ordinary digital camera in compact, and then I um, um, I uh, changed it, and I uh, now I use uh, uh, Nikon D three thousand three hundred with four. 24 megapixels and the notebook that uh, has um, 8 gigabyte RAM and it's it's uh, possible to work with it but not with the very heavy models that I use uh, um, with computer not a notebook and uh, which softwares I used uh, I um, the basic of course is uh, I just a photo scan but that then I uh, import the models in other programs, and uh, uh, I I'm combining these programs to, to uh, have the result that I want. So now I will show you only some uh, basic uh, testing models that I made to see if the this technique will work or not. Uh, just to to have an idea how the these facades look when I I try to use uh, auto scan to have a look that in in uh, when you are standing in front of facade uh, the the surface is uh, very it's a very distorted like the the color uh, and the relief that is uh, very damaged it's uh, not so good visible the actual the relief. And uh, insist uh, elements, and after you um, put away a texture, these uh, elements stand up much more better. In in, in some cases, if you combine uh, also texture and also without texture to, to to study the surface, you will get the good result. Uh, most future, most um, basic features of these facades, the decoration is the some architectural elements that they imitate archi architect architectural elements. These are these uh, free, free fridges and, um, and some architraves. And the most common element are the false door that you could maybe see in the center on the right image. There are some lines uh, in the center. This is the so-called false door that are the most common element of the decoration. And we can see it also in other examples, how they stand up from the when we put away texture. And another one. Uh, as you can, you can see, the, the big problem is the vegetation that is very uh, uh, grow up on the necropolis, and uh, it's not um, in the focus of the uh, local uh, departments to, to 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 clean it uh, very often. And this is another example of the very big facade that uh, spans over 20 meters and uh, also to the top and also in the white and uh, uh, later I will, I will say that uh, what are the limitations of the technique but just to have an uh, idea how uh, the, the facade that you cannot, uh, up, you, know, you cannot uh, achieve by physically 
you approach physically, you can also then turn in in virtual environment and to see it also from the top and how how was the um, previous uh, roof of the of the of the and the parts of the facade. So this is the last example of this testing models. Then I will also tell you that uh, why I have all the holes in the models, what are the disadvantages. And uh, one last comparison of the visibility of the um, elements of the surface. This is uh, Tomba della Sirena with the relief decoration, also with figural decoration. Uh, left part is uh, without texture in mesh lab, and the right part is uh, actually how you can see the tomb in the real environment. So I would like to emphasize that in, uh, after you create a model, you can very easily um, perform this. Uh, uh, you, you increase the readability of the surface. That, in, as you can see on the original photo, as you can see in environment is uh, very bad. And uh, in this is in the mesh lab, uh, I used shader radian scaling that is also well known to all this uh, inscription and then from the orthophoto I created a drawing of the inscription. Uh, this is another sh a shader that I used, uh, it's a so-called X-ray in MeshLab to understand the surface and also to see the section and how is the surface uh, not, uh, not, um, not perfect. Another uh, example of uh, lighting and shading in uh, mesh lab. This is a uh, uh, fregius from Doric tombs and the uh, fronton of uh, Tomba de la Sirena. And this is the comparison. Uh, I, I would like to do also the virtual anastylosis. This is just the testing model that on the up, upper part there is, is a um, image from the publication of the of this tomb, uh, the drawing, and the down part is uh, I I, I made several models of the fragments of this fronton and I, I put them in in the position that where they should belong. And uh, another example of virtual anastylosis are the toric toric tombs that actually the uh, this is the on the right part is the tomb itself the facade sorry. And uh, there are two fragments that uh, still exist, and one is in the Muse Archaeological Museum in Florence, another is uh, in front of the facades in situ. And this is after I, I created the model of the, of the facade itself, and then the model of the part in the museum in Florence. And I uh, tried to find uh, the original position of the fragment. This is a snapshot from Meshla, the, the point cloud, a little detail. Um, I would like to also say that uh, the, the down part of the facade was, uh, um, has a two phases. In one phase, uh, the decoration could be the fringes of the um, arms and the armory. And the second was uh, re, re, um, recutted. In, in the second phase, it was recutted and made. Uh, um, there was depicted a group of uh, magistrates or some like uh, scene of the saying farewell or saying goodbye to the deceased person. And uh, we can see both in in the fringes down part. So uh, to, uh, to continue in the work, I used all these several shaders to understand the relief surface that in, in my naked eye, in reality, it's not so visible. And uh, then I tried to make uh, the drawings of, uh, from the ortho, ortho image. This is uh, first, it's, uh, the first, the image on the top is the point cloud in AutoCAD and uh, also the uh, texture, uh, the orthophoto, the text, textured model, and I tried to 
and you need to, to make a drawings of the relief surface. And then this is the uh, way how I try to make the, the drawings in uh, AutoCAD. I try to visualize it several in several different ways to understand the relief surface much better. This is the um, example, the, the piece of museum. This is in AutoCAD. And uh, for sure, I, I tried to do a, a comparison with analogies in, with another Etruscan art in another tombs, uh, how, uh, um, what is their decoration. So uh, I compared the uh, other tombs and I tried to identify the shapes of the model. So and uh, these are the final um, or, or work in progress uh, drawings, uh, also with the edit uh, fragment that are the, the, based on the models. And this is the drawing that I made from the ortho photo of another um, tomb, Tomba de la Sirena. And this is an uh, um, example of how I did a virtual reconstruction of the Tomba de la Sirena. The image on the left is, uh, the, ba uh, is the basic model that uh, you get from a photo scan. And I imported it in the blender and I uh, um, used uh, different shape uh, brushes and I sculpted it into form that I suppose that could be in my hypothetical interpretation of how it was. Uh, since the model was very heavy and the computer was not able to, um, to work with it so good, so I had to perform retopology. It's, it's basically the to, to sculpt a new, to, to make a net of points on the basic model and to have it much more um, simpler. And the result was uh, in this, uh, also with the texture that I painted uh, and it was based on the, also the analogies with another Etruscan art. Uh, I say it's hypothetical, it's my interpretation. So the conclusions. Um, I would like to uh, emphasize the advantages that I found um, much more than uh, the disadvantages. Um, so as everyone knows, the multi-image photogrammetry is a very user-friendly technique. Uh, after you get some uh, introduction, how to work with it, and some basic training, it's uh, much more faster of collecting in collecting data compared to traditional documenting methods. Uh, of course, it's um, in compared to laser scanning, it's more uh, um, cheaper, low cost. And I also used uh, low cost and open source soft softwares to work with the with the data. And uh, uh, as I said in the beginning, it's uh, much, um, it's a very suitable to when you work with the very fragile surface that you cannot uh, attach to it something or you, you must take uh, care to don't, um, to don't break uh, the surface. Um, also, you can achieve uh, the data from the places where are very hard to access, very different uh, very difficult uh, accessible places and uh, uh, so you get the basic uh, digital pre uh, preservation uh, of the copy of the, mo of the monument then the data you can use further like for example when you collect it you can extract some information by comparing uh, according to some chosen, chosen criteria, like you choose some, um, um, because the tombs are tens or maybe um, around hundreds, so if you make a big uh, accumulation of the models, you can um, compare between them, some according to some criteria that you choose, and then uh, to perform the analysis in virtual environment, as I said, is uh, shaders, lightning, changing, then you can also cut models and measure them. And uh, with the increased readability, you 
can understand better the shape of the surface and the relief decorations. The main disadvantage that I found is that uh, very, the access to the monuments is sometimes very hard. And um, so to, to get the photos from the good positions sometimes is uh, very difficult because the terrain and the landscape is uh, very, it's not it's not bad, it's like rocks and uh, forests. So um, uh, I, I know that in standard like, like excavation or standard survey you, you can uh, clean uh, the monument and uh, also it, its environment. So I think that uh, in this case it uh, should be possible to be able to get the photos from the all ne necessary angles for, to create models that has no holes or some distortion. And also, if you use a telescopic handle or a drone, you can also get pictures from the upper parts. So, the model should be complete. And uh, for the further developments, uh, I would like to create a catalog that would be like a supplement for uh, the traditional historical study. Uh, like a catalog of the models and drawings, not from all tombs that exist, but that one that are like like best sample, and the study you know, some according to some criteria, the chronology, typology, to choose the particular particular elements, and uh, um, uh, that this should uh, make easier the study of evolution of uh, these kind of monuments. And then maybe by repeating the scanning of monument could be possible to do some monitoring of erosion. So that's all. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>